think we can start. Everybody came back from lunch. So hello, everybody, and kindly welcome to the second part of the first day of History on the Edge. Uh, my name is Tiasha Konoshek, and I will be the chair of this panel. So today we have already heard a fascinating lecture by Helen Yaffe about um, democracy and participation in the revolutionary Cuba. And now we will continue with a panel titled, titled Socialist Democracy and Multiparty System. So we will hear three contributions, first by Theresia Bauer, then Jakub Schloff and Anna Kladnik, which will be followed by a concluding comment given by Ivan Sablin. After that, we should have, I think, enough time uh, for a discussion and, of course, first among the participants and then also for questions and comments from the audience. So without further ado, let me introduce our first speaker, Theresia Bauer. She comes from the Ludwig Maximilians Universität in München, Department for Neueste Geschichte und Zeitgeschichte. She has uh, most recently contributed several texts uh, to an edited volume, Kinder for den Führer, der Klebensborn in München, if I'm not mistaken, no, still uh, New York things coming. Uh, she has also collaborated in editing several monographs, including Gesichter der Zeitgeschichte, Deutsche Lebensläufe im 20. Jahrhundert. Uh, and today she will speak about the multi-party system in the GDR, giving some First, some general remarks, I believe, and then focusing on the Demokratische Bauernpartei in Deutschland. So, um, thank you very much for the invitation and the kind introduction. The multi-party system in the GDR, general remarks and a special view on the Peasants' Party. First, foundation and general features on the, of the multi-party system in the GDR. Only a month after the end of the war, the Soviet military administration in Germany, SMAD, gave permission for the foundation of political parties in their occupation zone as early as 10th June of 1945. The Communist Party of Germany, the Social Democratic Party of Germany were re-established soon afterwards the new Christian Democratic Union, CDU, and the Liberal Democratic Party, or groups of them, LDP, later LDPD, were instantly constituted in Berlin. That is where the capital of a unified Germany was to be. These party foundations came earlier than in the Western occupation zones. It was Stalin's policy towards Germany, which attempted to allay fears of the Soviet occupation. The establishment of a multi-party system in the Soviet zone were to visibly underline the all-German orientation of Stalin's policy to the outside world. The parties were to be integrated into a parliamentary system. The adoption of a Soviet political model was not an option for the Soviet occupation policy at this time. But the new parties were founded into a party bloc. Their licensing by the Soviet administration was made dependent on their joining a so-called united front of anti-fascist democratic parties, which was founded on 14th July 1945. For the sake of simplicity, I will use the term bloc or united bloc for this in the following. Such bloc committees were also set up in the states, in German Länder, and on lo lower levels, initially for transmission downwards. In the central Berlin Unite Unity Bloc, joint agreements were only to be reached unanonymously. In other words, political will was not to be formed through voting procedures. While it was still emphasized that the parties were independent, Political debates and disputes, refusals by the bourgeois bloc parties in the United Bloc led to the dismissal and exchange of party leaders of the CDU and LDP. Since the Communist Party or after the forced unification with the Social Democrats in 1946, the Social Unity Party enjoyed the full backing of the Soviet occupiers the block meetings served mainly to integrate and discipline the Christian Democrats and the Liberal Democrats. In the block, 
or in the successor organization from 1915 of the National Front of Democratic Germany, the political elections in the GDR at all levels from 1950 onwards were determined and organized according to unified lists. Contrary to promises of free elections to the bourgeois parties in 1949, so that they would agree to the founding of a state, a second German state. The fixed proportional representation <coughs> for mandate numbers deprived the bourgeois bloc parties in future of their ability to convert voter approval into political majorities in parliaments. With the founding of two more parties in the GDR in 1948, the Democratic Peasants Party of Germany and the National Democratic Party of Germany, the proportional representation of mandates for the bourgeois bloc parties deteriorated. The inclusion of mass organizations in the National Front also pushed the bourgeois parties back because ultimately SED members prevailed there for list nominations. The new parties, whose foundation was decided by the SMAD and which were dependent on the SED from the beginning, were intended to counter the Christian Democrats and the Liberal Democrats' competitors. Initially, however, the Soviet intention was to act activate the bloc system, which was in crisis through competition, also to get the SED to improve its poor, <laughs> its poor acceptance among the rural population through political work. The National Democratic Party was supposed to integrate former members of the Nazi party, former members of the Wehrmacht and other voters of the right wing spectrum including refugees and expellees from the German Eastern territories. The Peasant Party was supposed to bind those rural strata of the population that the SED could not reach or, for ideological reasons, did not want to have in its cadre party that had been emerging since 1948, so-called individual farmers, including refugees and expellees who had acquired new land in the course of the 1945 land reform, so-called new farmers, but were considered politically suspicious, also potentially interested in joining the CDU or LDP. Until 1952, the year of the second party conference of the SED, the fourth socialization course was decided, and 1940, 1953, numerous transformation processes took place in all four bloc parties. Restructuring. The party leadership of the bourgeois parties were dismissed. The membership base was altered, whether in the course of party purchase through flight to the West, cadre policy, education and control through a party training system according to the Soviet model was introduced for party functionaries. The increasing programmatic narrowing of the four bloc parties diminished their attractiveness for recruiting members from straight to remote from the SED. Also, the DPD and the NDPD initially remained programmatically vague and were thus potentially attractive for many. They accepted the leading role of the SED from the outset. The CDU and the Liberal Democrats officially rec recognized the SED's leading role only by autumn 1952 and 1953. After the 1953 People's Uprising, the SED made greater efforts to obtain information on what was going on in the bloc parties. Substantive guidance and control increased and became more condensed and pervasive by the end of the 1950s. However, 
the instruction apparatus of the Central Committee of the SED, the SETCA sector of or Department of Friendly Organizations, aimed, to, aimed at ensuring that the bloc parties themselves voluntarily adapted to the will of the SED, aligned their parties on their own initiative to the SED guidelines, trained the caterers in such a way that downward influence on the members was injured. The influence of the secret policy, the Ministry of State Security, MFS, was limited until 1947 and initially served predominantly to gather information. Only from the, nine, from the late 1950s and in the following decades did information from informers of the Peasants' Party led to a dense body of knowledge in the SED and information from the MFS was used directly in the Central Committee of the SED instructing and steering the DPD. In the eyes of the SED under Ulbricht, the party apparatus of the Peasants' Party was often unable to do this in the 1960s. Finally, from the beginning until 1989, the bloc parties had formal and personal contacts with the SMAD and later with Soviet agencies. Being an informant for Soviet agencies protected against recruitment by the MFS. Prominent party politici politicians maintained these special relations until 1989. Manfred Gerlach for the Liberal Democrats and Gerald Götting for the Social, uh, for the Christian Democrats, for example. Research has underlined some central functions of the bloc parties which I would like to outline here. The alibi function, the transmission and stabilization of rule. In my opinion, the overriding goal of the Soviets and the SED leadership in the 1950s was certainly the population should remain in the GDR. The four bloc parties were supposed to additionally legitimize the GDR as a state and the SED as the dominant state party to compensate for a democratic deficit and to stabilize the power relations through a broadening of the SED supporters' social ties. The following five points seem to me to be central to this. First, in the Soviet occupation zone and the early GDR, differences in the political options for the population were to activate a proportion of the population as large as possible and thus to integrate them. This intention of the Soviet authorities can be clearly seen in the political orientation of the Peasants' Party in the 1950s to achieve a higher acceptance for the collectivization cause and at the same time to cushion the economic problems resulting from an overhasty radical collectivization, for example, by using the expertise of self-employed individual farmers. Second, during the 1950s, the aim was to link non-socialist parts of the population to SED rule. Christian affiliated strata were to be integrated in the Christian Democratic Union. The LDP was to appeal to the liberal middle classes, educated middle classes, above all also craftsmen, the self-employed, tradesmen, that means owners of means of production, which were to be expropriated only in 1972. Members of the bloc parties were to extend the project of social revolution. Third, on the transmission function, so the word of Dietrich Staritz, communicating and transporting political goals and projects of the SED downwards, but also information in the opposite direction. <clears throat> 
In the 1950s, for example, the Peasants' Party was not only supposed to help carry out the collectivization thrusts, but above all to take up the problems in the process at the grassroots level, report them upwards, and thus help eliminate problems. Especially during the economic crisis years of the GDR in the 1980s, the bloc parties were supposed to capture the mood at the grassroots level, record suggestions for improvement, determine discourses in population groups specific to the bloc parties, and finally work out proposals themselves. That was a new theme for them. The results of the ways were fed into the Central Committee apparatus for further political processing and treatment. Fourth, the Peasant Party also served as a shock absorber in its, in its activities in agricultural policy up to 1963. It mitigated the consequences of the radicalized policy of upheaval in the countryside by registering problems and advising, for example, that the approach of, to collectivization should be adapted regionally and in terms of time, but also intermediate forms of collectivizations. Even if this, these proposals were often not implemented, the attention by the party was usually already considered positive by the disappointed individual farmer. But the party also softened the negative feedback from below to the SED upwards. This was because discontent from below was dampened and channeled upwards. For the Christian Democratic Union, this has been called elastic policy. These forms of participation in rule ultimately supported and secured the rule of the SED until the end. Fifth, policy towards West Germany. For the Christian Democratic Union and the Liberal Democrats, the all-German orientation was enormously important from the time of their founding, also in the assessment of tasks by Soviet agencies and dependent on the changing guidelines of Soviet Germany policy or later the so-called West policy of the SED. While both parties initially had joint committees with Western parties, the Western CDU completely severed ties with the Eastern CDU in 1948 and established an exile CDU in the West and an Eastern Committee in the CDU until 1989-90. The Western sections of the CDU and LDP were temporarily dissolved after the 1953 uprising. The West German uh, FDP, either the West German Liberals, maintained continuous contacts with the LDP until the year 1989. The opportunities for the Peasant Party and the National Democratic Party in Western politics were marginal. Second, changes over time and characteristics from the 1960s onwards. By the beginning of the 1960s, all the bloc parties had the same kind of personnel and did not differ significantly from the SED in terms of program. Guidance by the SED was ensured and the MFS security mechanism took effect on a greater extent. The bloc parties, analogous to the SED, conducted cadre training and developed nomenclature cadres, even if their functionaries were often displaced by the SED members in state leadership functions in the 1960s. For the peasant party, for example, it is evident that 
while many previously individual peasant members fell into agony after the full collectivization, the party leadership intensified the qualification for functionaries and members. The prospect of career and social advancement increased. Repressive state measures used in the 1950s to discipline members with dissenting political attitudes or actions were clearly on the decline after the building of the wall from 1961 onwards. And yet, in the 1960s, after the SED under Walter Ulbricht proudly proclaimed that it had reached the stage of socialist human community, the bloc parties feared for their own existence. The Peasants' Party was no longer allowed to recruit new members after the official conclusion of collectivization in 1960. It had simply adopted the SED's program in 1963. However, it experienced a revival from the mid-1960s onwards precisely in the face of disparagement by the SED and the threat of dying off as a party and the economic problem consequences in the course of full collectivization. The Christian Democratic Union also interpreted the agening of its base and the admission stop for members as a sign of a gradual dissolution process of the party. With the takeover of Eric Honecker as Sec Secretary General of the SED in 1971, the prospects for the bloc parties improved. Their position experienced a certain upgrading, at least visibly to the outside world. All parties were allowed to recruit members again, which was visibly reflected in the membership figures. In the official hierarchy of the bloc parties among themselves, the Peasants' Party, which had been reviled by Ulbricht, now moved to second place behind the SED as the closest ally in the official rankings. In the 1950s, this had been the bourgeois bloc party CDU and LDPD. Honecker improved the atmosphere in his dealings with the bloc parties. In ritualized personal meetings, Honecker personally informed the party leaders about forthcoming SED decisions. The picture so such a meeting. However, this was not associated with an increase in political influence. These statistics show the membership of the bloc parties. A special spectacle to show the supposedly democratic voting processes in the GDR parliament was the handling of the legislation on the issue of abortion in 1972. This was the only case in the history of the People's Chamber in which 14 votes against and eight abstentions were counted on a bill. The vote was released and the Christian Democratic Union was informed by the SED that votes against it in the Volkskammer could increase its appeal among Christian affiliated sections of the population. The CDU's proposal to include the bloc parties in the course of the debate on a new SED program was initially rejected by the SED, then accepted in modified form on the basis, on the basis of internal consultations. Finally, in 1976, after the Treaty of Helsinki, <laughs> It was included in a new SED party program as a concession to the CDU that GDR citizens would have equal rights regardless of worldview or religious confession. <laughs>
the constitutional amendment in 1974, which in demarcation from the Federal Republic, now wanted to record it as a capitalist and hostile foreign country, even provoked opposition from the Peasants' Party and the NDPD. In the 1980s, the achievement of communism in the GDR was ideologically and real, realistically a quite distant prospect and subsequent opened a long-term perspective for the bloc parties. I will now briefly talk about a special feature on the Farmers' Party. The DPD was insignificant in politics towards West Germany, but had as a unique selling point that only it was allowed to make contact with Eastern European peasant parties, such as those in Poland, Bulgaria and the GSSR. It was a prestige project for the peasant party to also maintain contacts with other international peasant associations, apart from the fact that party functionaries were thus allowed to travel abroad. But the DBD supported Ulbricht's line that the, the United Peasants Party in Poland, ZSL, could not have an equal position in comparison to the Polish United Workers Party, PZPR. <laughs> The exchange with the Polish Peasants' Party took place occasionally at all levels from 1948 onwards. Also visits among district associations at officials' meeting of district associations at party congresses. The reports in the 1960s and 1970s show that the DPD visits served to gather information about what the GDR saw as the unusually open and democratic pro procedures and internals of the Polish Peasant Party and the Polish political situation. For example, the reports noted the different voting behavior at the Polish um, Peasants Party Congresses compared to GDR conditions. They reported comparatively high rejection rates for elections of the party leader were unusual for the DBD. The SED leadership deduced from this that in future only DBD cadres who were particular, particularly politically stable should be sent on trips. I come to the conclusion. Also, the bloc parties ultimately suffered from the disparagement and disrespect of the SED. No solidarity among themselves can be detected. No attempts or clandestine agreements to stand together against the SED. Toothless tigers, like the bloc parties, were played off against each other. Higher party functionaries pursued pity questions of recognition among themselves in a self-referential system in favor of the SED. The bloc parties appeared to be static entities. The defined profiles were too narrow. Reorienting to other membership strata or a different addressing of potential voters was excluded. Although those interested in becoming a DBD member did not have to provide information on their religious affiliation, they hardly encountered any convinced Christians in the party. The terminology within the LDPD alone underlined a certain degree of independence. According to my knowledge of the files, this also applies to the CDU. I suspect that this is a line of continuity of the educated middle-class milieu and possibly a continuity of the past cultural and social, socio-moral milieus of the Weimar period in Germany. The long-term cultural imprints appear significant. In addition to political socialis socialization in the GDR bloc party, the party leaders of all the bloc parties were ultimately convinced communists and expressed this even after 1990. 
The leaders of the NDPD, the LDPD and CDU were in office longer than the SED leader Honecker. You saw this on the picture. In 1989, the year of change, the Peasants' Party leadership reacted later than the other bloc parties to the growing discontent and the search for reorientation. Only in June 1990, the party leadership decided to orient the party towards a conservative liberal direction and as a party of owners and entrepreneurs aiming for a union with the East CDU. The latter merged with the West CDU on 1st October 1990. The NDPD eventually joined the FDP, the West FDP, and disappeared as an independent organization like the DPD. The party system of the Federal Republic had integrated the bloc parties with the successor party of the SED, a party to the left of social democracy remained as it had existed since 1918. With the help of the bloc parties and their group-specific approaches, which aimed at difference, the SED was able to stabilize and perpetuate its own leadership in an elastic concept and above all in everyday rule. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.